Hey, what's going on? There's a ton of questions about what's going on with the supply chain in China and all that kind of stuff. So I got our expert here, <laughs> John Miller from Patreon. And uh, John, you've been a patron for over a year now. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you for Very all the welcome. support. Yep, happy to do it. But uh, all right, enough shit about Patreon. Let's <laughs> talk about the supply chain. Okay. So before we get into uh, what you know about the supply chain, what makes you relevant on the topic? Uh, okay. Uh, so I've been a engineer and a machinist for 13 years now, uh, basically. Right after I graduated in uh, 2008, that's, that's all I've done is uh, chip making and manufacturing. Uh, spent eight years at one of the major machine tool companies, uh, executing a lot of projects locally and globally. Uh, a lot of them for the big companies like GM, Ford, Caterpillar. Uh, I spent four years uh, at Apple uh, where I did iPhone manufacturing and uh, I've made over 40 trips to China. Uh, each trip is two, three weeks sometimes. So I've spent plenty of time over there uh, executing those projects as well. So uh, I've, I've been around the supply chain quite a bit and I uh, definitely understand it from a uh, manufacturing perspective. Do you speak Mandarin? You know, I, by the time I kind of quit traveling there, I could speak maybe a hundred words, like enough to get in a taxi, get to the local watering hole and uh, get back to my hotel. So uh, I can speak a little bit. Damn, that's cool. <laughs> so what's, what's going on with the supply chain? Cause it seems it's hitting everything from food. You know, it seems I'm a foodie, I like restaurants. Uh, it's a little more difficult now that I have a 12 week old, but, um, <laughs> But every time I go to a new restaurant, the menu, you know, they're out of half the menu. They're saying there's gonna be a huge toy shortage. We obviously know about the toilet paper shortage, which was hoarding. Mm -hmm. but, um, <clears throat> but it seems like no matter what, the computer chip shortage, yep. which is coming, and uh, from everything I've been reading, get ready f for a huge battery shortage when it comes to all these electric vehicles and stuff. Sure. So where where are all the hangups and why does this keep happening so i think in kind of the examples you bring up there's a lot of different reasons for each of them right uh computer chips is a different root cause and it focuses specifically on vehicles and that supply chain for the most part electronics is doing okay um, there are some delays with that but some of those delays is kind of related to the shipping lanes uh, a lot of the stuff that you see like at Target or consumer products, that stuff is being imported. So that has a lot more to do with all the ships that are trapped in Port of LA. Um, and even, even if we open up ports, say in Florida or things like that, it's still, it takes time to get them there and then to get them on new trucks, new shipping routes, and for all that to kind of catch up with, uh, with what we see like on the store shelves. So going back to the vehicles, so the computer chip shortage is only affecting the auto industry? Yeah, so um, I don't want to say there's no effect to other industries, right? But if you look back in the pandemic, I mean, everybody stayed at home. They, a lot of people upgraded webcams and computers and, and companies, you know, upgraded IT infrastructure and all that, right? That's all chip-based stuff. The vehicle market, they had to severely limit their forecasts, right? Because they didn't expect to sell as many vehicles throughout that time and, and they would have leftover inventory going into kind of the follow-up year. So they actually paused a lot of their semiconductor orders and, uh, and that causes uh, their backlog right now. Um, I think for this audience, uh, one analogy is, you know, when we had the ammo shortage last year, a company like Hornady or Winchester or Federal or something, they're not going to spend time making 4570, 357 SIG, even 300 blackout, right? They're going to focus on 9 mil, 556, 308, yeah. right? The chip market is very similar. So the chips that go into vehicles are a very different uh, quality. They're, they're an older technology that makes them at these chip fabs. And they, um, the way that it works is the chip companies are not necessarily going to put a lot of investment 
into making an old style of chip. They're worried about making chips for newer products. Uh, you bought some new Apple products this past year that have the Apple M1 chip. That's a flagship computer chip. And the companies, especially like TSMC in Taiwan, they're gonna focus on those. They're gonna focus on the, you know, everyone that upgraded all their IT stuff that takes more advanced chips. When the auto market had that pause, they backed off orders on simpler chips. Hmm. And, you know, they're, they're, they're just not gonna invest money on making kind of outdated or soon to be outdated tech. Just like Hornady, Remington, all those companies aren't, you know, they're gonna focus on what they can sell right now. And some of those boutique ammunitions they're gonna take a pause on until they can kind of catch up and then maybe get back to making that stuff. Is it, I've been seeing all these cars, like Teslas especially, in abandoned parking lots yep. or, uh, or stores that don't get a lot of traction anymore, yep. like Best Buy, see? Yep. Best Buy here in Franklin is loaded with Teslas. Wow. And so I don't know what they're doing there, but from what I, it's, this is just hearsay, mm -hmm. but are they there because there is a completed vehicle that just doesn't have the computer chip inserted? Yeah, that's right, yep. And that's happening across the entire auto industry? Yep. When do you think that's gonna so, get back to par? The forecasts for manufacturing through 2022, they're, positive the problem is is once we catch up they're gonna have to slash forecasts again because they have all this inventory of vehicles that just needed finishing and then sent the lots and they're still not going to make new vehicles you know as many new vehicles after that it, it's the backlog's not going to be there so um probably into 2023 we're going to be feeling the lingering effects of this and um I think where you're going to see it is, you know, a lot of these tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers into the automotive market, people that make engines, transmissions, drivetrains, electric motors. Um, it may not be the chips that are the problem going into next year, but all of those next tier suppliers aren't going to be producing the volume of parts and components that they were because Ford GM at the assembly plants already have, you know, a lot of vehicles kind of queued up. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel this, you know, when, when manufacturing is down, uh, the U.S. economy is, is down, and, and you're going to feel it kind of, you know, it's going to be a sustained kind of, uh, I don't know, depression, I guess. I don't want to say depression like, you know, a Great Depression or anything like that or even a recession, but, I mean, the market as a whole is going to be a little lower than, uh, than it would in a typical year like 2018, 2019. Do you think China is squeezing us at all? I don't think so. Um, no. Not in every case. Um, I mean, the backlog in, in, of shipping into LA, I mean, that's, that's for everyone to see. I mean, that's, that's probably more so our own doing and how the Port of LA is managing, you know, all the trucks coming in and out, um, you know, truckers getting back to work, you know, off of these uh, unemployment benefits that went on for a long time. So that has an impact. Um, truthfully, if you look at all of the chip fabs. Well, hold on, before Sorry. we go in there. So you're saying you're saying the major hang up is right here in LA. Yeah, so anything that's made in the US and stays within the borders, manufacturers are doing fine. Uh, it's a, we're seeing a little bit of slowing with metal supply. So are all the other country, are all these other countries, do they not have shortages with this shit? It's just not as US? much, not as much. We're the only country that can't get our shit together. We're also a huge country. So, you know, if you got to think we only have so many ports. Uh, you know, we've got L.A., we've got some in the northeast, right? We have and then we have the stuff on the east coast like uh, like Virginia. It's going to take a while to even get across all the country. Well, how um, many computer chips do you think you could put on a 747 jet? <laughs> that stuff costs a lot more now with there's an increase in prices right now for shipping containers. It's basically gone up double in the last year. Um, and that price continues to increase. It will get to a point where airship will start to compete with freight or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a container freight. And, um, and then you might start to see that become the more attractive option, but we're still going to absorb all those costs because it's not, it's not a cheaper option. It's just a, 
maybe in the future a more equally competitive option. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand it, you know, why it would be more expensive, but there's, you know, lots of countries that are landlocked that don't have a port. Yep. And I mean, I can't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know prices, but I can't see Tesla, you know, the one of the most well-off companies in the world, if not the, I don't yeah. know who's number one right now, not being able to charge or, charter a 747 full of so computer chips. So big companies like that, no problem, right? Um, I think where you're seeing a lot of it is there's a lot of small and mid-tier distributors all throughout the U.S., you know, the, the, and companies that are U.S.-based that make products, but they're made overseas. They don't have that same buying power that a big conglomerate, you know, out in Silicon Valley has, right? Mm -hmm. Apple is the same way. They they have all the capability and money they need to air freight a lot of their ship, a lot of their shipments, and that's fine. But throughout the rest of the country, you know, we just don't have that ability to secure our goods for for everyone's products, right? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen if China takes Taiwan? So my opinion on that in a general sense is, you know, we, we as a country we put Israel up on a big pedestal, right? Because they help us, you know, keep the Middle East kind of, you know, at a certain security level, let's say. I think Taiwan, it should be 1A and 1B uh, mm. between Israel and Taiwan. Um, so Taiwan is the brain power behind all of the chip manufacturing. Uh, there's really only two major fabs in China itself. There's one in Shanghai, there's one in Nanjing. Um, but most of the chip production is done by one company, TSMC, and most of that's done in within Taiwan's borders. And um, if there's a few chess pieces on the map that make the most difference, Taiwan's absolutely one of them. Hmm. I wonder how that's going to pan out. Moving on with the supply chain, there's the computer shortage now. What do you foresee happening with the battery, with batteries? They're saying there's going to be a battery shortage. China controls uh, the batteries. We just gave up all the lithium mines in Afghanistan. Yep, yep. Uh, I think it's going to be a major problem that they control, especially if they take Taiwan, yep. that they control the computer chip market, yep. and they're going to control the battery market. Um, is that, would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I'd say it's very accurate. Now, it, it kind of, I mean, does it matter, does it not? Right now with all the green pushes, it absolutely matters, right? If we slow some of that down and continue, you know, to just use gas vehicles, diesel vehicles, things like that, our dependence on it doesn't matter as much, right? Um, th I think there's enough, in the consumer electronics space or just electronics in general that you know we have enough lithium that we need or you know battery components in general but it's the electric vehicle market and that growth and how big those batteries are that uh that's really you know that's going to be the bigger bigger consumer uh going forward and, and can we manage that while the powers that be i guess are you know pushing all these these green initiatives hmm. interesting well, I just want to do a quick, you know, qu real quick discussion down and dirty on it. Is there anything about the supply chain that I'm missing or leaving out that you feel that's important? Uh, I think one comment I would make is, you know, if, if you're watching the talking heads on TV or whatever, that one supply chain expert gets, you know, two minutes of their talking time between commercial breaks to kind of, it's, it's not one thing, it's not just shipping, it's not just who owns the chip fabs, it's not just who owns the lithium. Like these problems are deep and supply chains are extremely deep. Um, you know, if you think of uh, like the automotive market, for example, there's the metal that we mine to make engines, transmissions, drivetrains, steel, aluminum, you know, all those components, right? Then there's the next tier, which is the people that take that and they turn it into nuts and bolts and, and raw material. Then there's the next tier with the casting suppliers and you know all those who do the machining of the castings, things like that. Then the next tier is the assemblers, people who build the engines, build the transmissions, and then it goes to final assembly, uh, you know, at, at Ford, GM, you know, wherever, right? The supply chain's way too deep to just be like, just point at shipping. 
mm. to just point at Taiwan, to just point at, at China. It's uh, every industry is going to feel it in a slightly different way. Um, but, you know, it's, it's all kind of a result of, you know, lingering stuff from, from the last you know, couple of years. It seems like it was all triggered from COVID. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I mean, you know, like we said in the early example that we saw it, you know, in, in this because of ammo and things like that, but um, it, it's going to have lingering effects for a while. So. Interesting. Well, you're starting your own business. I want to plug it. <laughs> what is it? Way of the mill. Uh, we do training and consulting for CNC manufacturers. So I'm going to plug your website and your YouTube channel and what's your IG? Way of the mill. Way of the mill. At way of the mill on Instagram, way of the mill on YouTube and uh, way of the mill dot com on uh, on the webs. Perfect. Well, best of luck. I can't wait to see what <laughs> Thank that you. turns yeah. into. So thanks a lot for coming. Yeah. Out, man. Thanks a lot, Sean. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you too. All right, there you have it. Quick down and dirty on the supply chain. <laughs> <laughs>